going to go ahead and get started this morning. Uh, it's good to see those of you who were able to make it out here this morning. Uh, the weather's kind of been up and down. We know that we have a winter storm coming in, so we want to try to, you know, get everybody home safely. Uh, like I said, we're glad to have you here this morning to worship with us here at Sidewell Road. We're glad to have those that are online worshiping with us and to have that opportunity. Don't forget we got several that are sick and we got the handouts. We'll talk about some of that in a little bit, but let's go ahead and we'll start our services with a prayer this morning. Lord, we're grateful for this day and we're thankful for Jesus and the sacrifice that he made for each one of us, Lord. And we know it was your will to be done and we're grateful for that and grateful for him putting himself in our place. We're thankful for the church worldwide, and we're thankful for the church here at Sidewell Road, the efforts that we make to spread the gospel in this area, and the missionaries that we help support that spread your word throughout the world and throughout our country, Lord, and we ask that you continue to be with us in those efforts. We're grateful for each member, we're grateful for the efforts that they put forth to help us in the different areas that we have. Our deacons have displayed their areas of service, and we're grateful for each deacon and what he does to further the work here at this church, and we ask that each member will look to them to be in an area of service. We ask that you continue to be with those that are sick. We have several on our list that have recovered from surgery, several that have been sick lately that are returned to us. We know that our country is still in a situation with the pandemic, and we know that several people are still contacting the the COVID disease, and we ask that you continue to be with them, protect them, and get them feeling better as soon as possible, and be with those that are caring for them. We ask that you continue to be with those who have lost loved ones recently, and we know that you are the great comforter, and we ask that you watch over them and give them strength to look to you for that strength that they need during this time. We ask that you be with our first responders also during the pandemic, and we ask that you keep them safe. We ask that you continue to be with them during this week, and today as the storm comes in with the icy situations, keep them safe, those that are going to be out working in this and those that have to respond to situations that are beyond their control, but we ask that you continue to watch over them. Be with us also as we go home today with the situations that we are dealing with with the storm thankful for our military and what they do for us to keep our country safe and to give us this opportunity to be able to worship without molestation and government going and taking this opportunity away from us. We're thankful for that. We're thankful for us being able to worship here this morning. We're thankful for Richard and what he does for this congregation, being able to stand up here and give us a lesson and to teach and all the things that he does for us. And we're so grateful for him. And I ask that we open our hearts and our ears that we'll listen to what he has to give us this morning. Continue to be with us as we worship you this morning. I pray that everything we do is done to glorify your name and acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Number 257. 257. And following this song, we'll have our scripture reading and next prayer. I need the every
Scripture reading this morning will come from 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 through 11. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 through 11. Therefore, therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, lion seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. If you would bow with me, please. Dear Lord, we are so thankful that we can come here this morning to worship you, uh, to sing songs of praise to you, to go to your scripture, and, and to learn from your word. Thankful for this avenue of prayer that allows us to to communicate with you, Lord, directly. Uh, thankful for for Christ Christ's death and, and burial and resurrection that allows that to happen, that allowed that that veil to be torn, and, and for that uh, direct option uh, to be available to us. Lord, I ask that you would be with this congregation. Uh, I ask that you would be with those that that are suffering right now. Be with those that are sick, both at home and in the hospital. I ask that you would. Watch over Gary and Teresa uh, as they're dealing with, with COVID. I ask that, that everybody that's, that's dealing with this, this virus, uh, that you would, would comfort them, that you would uh, allow them to return to full health as quickly as possible, Lord. Lord, I ask you to be with those that have experienced loss and that you would comfort them, allow us to be a comfort uh, and a good example for those people. Lord, I ask that you would watch over us uh, as we go about this worship service. I pray that everything that we do here will be done in, in accordance with your will and will be done in a way that glorifies you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're using a song book and would like to mark the song of encouragement this morning, it will be 113. 113 will be the song of encouragement. And having done that, we'll sing number 25. Number 25, and if you would please stand. Anywhere with Jesus I can safely go, anywhere he leads me in this world below, anywhere that uh, for some, this story I'm going to tell, I've told before, but I think it goes to the lesson that I want to bring to us today. Uh, many years ago, when Pam and I were younger, and our boys were younger, we used to work with the youth group a lot, and we would go on youth trips with them. One of the youth trips that we went on was to Senatobia, uh, and while we were there, there, were, uh, there was a skit put on for us that had an impact on me, and uh, I want to use it to launch the lesson today. Uh, there was a young man uh, on the stage with two other men, one on one side of a rope, one on the other. The rope was pretty, pretty big around, uh, and the one in the middle was trying to walk that rope. Uh, and he kept falling over from one side to the other because he couldn't get his balance. Uh, and uh, to make that story short, the gist of it was on the, on the one side... There was God in God's ways. And on the other side, there was Satan and Satan's ways. Uh, and as he traveled down that and tried to walk that rope, 
he was falling over both ways because he couldn't keep his balance. If you think about that, I think the problem with that whole analogy was he didn't really have a very good battle plan. Uh, in the military, we were taught, <coughs> as we developed battle plans, the first thing that we wanted to do is get away from the front lines. We want to pitch our tent on the front line up against the battlefield because the enemy would patrol and try to find weaknesses in our defense to be able to attack. What we were taught was to seize the high ground. What that young man did on that rope, what he should have done was seize the high ground. He should have moved so far away on God's side that he couldn't even see the rope. And then he wouldn't have been tempted to fall over to the other way. As I was preparing for the class this morning, uh, because of uh, uh, Gary and Andy being out, uh, one of the verses in, in that passage that we talked about in verse 11 talked about how the devil, Satan is our adversary. How many of us believe that we're at war with Satan? Because I'm going to tell you, even though you don't believe it, the devil knows he is. He's out to attack us in ways that we cannot imagine. And because of that, we have to prepare ourselves. We need to create a battle plan that will help us to sustain his attacks. The good thing is that Peter has already laid that plan out for us in the verses that Chris read just a few minutes ago. How many of us are, are tempted from time to time? I would say all of us. And when you think about it, that temptation comes in different, what I would call danger zones. My danger zone is different from Hiram's are different from, uh, uh, from Paul's, or whoever we want to talk about. The danger zones are different, and we're constantly sidestepping those things that are coming at us. Somehow, some way, we need to develop a battle plan, understanding that the devil is out to get us. And if you look at these verses, what I see in these verses is something that what I think would help us in our battle plan. Look at what he says first uh, in verse 6. First, uh, first Peter 5 in verse 6. He says, first, we must humble ourselves. Now folks, this is one of those virtues that I think is very difficult for a lot of mankind. Because it's very difficult sometimes for us to get self out of the way. Because if we don't humble ourselves, then the mighty hand of God cannot do good things for us. We have to figure out a way to make myself less important. Because when I try to go to war with my plan, I'm probably going to fail. I'm going to be devoured by that devil. But if I can put God's plan, God's battle plan into action, I can be ready. I must humble myself, get myself out of the way. Look, the Old Testament tells us that. Jesus tells us that. Paul tells us that over and over again, and Peter tells us that. We have got to try to get ourself out of the way first, because nothing else can follow if I don't get myself humble. Look at what the Bible says in, in uh, Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 18. Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before the fall. In James chapter 4 and verse 6, but he gives more grace, therefore to, uh, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. And just four verses later in James chapter 4 and verse 10, he says, Humble yourself, a song that we sing, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Isn't that exactly what Peter says at the end of verse 6? 
in First Peter 5 and verse 6, look at what he said. He, he may exalt you in due time. We can't lift ourselves up, folks. God can lift us up in a way that would help us develop a battle plan for Satan. Only Him. And as long as I try to do it my way, I promise you, I am going to fail. But if I do it God's way, by getting myself out of the way, He will lift me up. Now, and in that great hope that we have of a home with Him in heaven. First, we need to humble ourselves. Put others before ourselves. Second, he says in verse 7, Casting all your cares upon Him, for He cares for you. Stop stressing. Cast all your cares upon you. One of the ways I think the devil attacks us is through anxiety. And I wonder in my, in my mind, I wonder how in the world we could be so, so anxious. Look at all, look at all the, the, the things that we have in life. That, that mankind, through God's ability, uh, through God's uh, ability he, he has given them uh, to create devices that we've got. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing. Microwaves, instant coffee, um, instant mashed potatoes, minute rice. Man, we can go from the freezer to the dinner table in five minutes. Man, look at all that He's given us. He's given us, he's given us cell phones. Uh, he's given us uh, nice cars, fancy cars, and, and, and fast planes, and great roads. Well, not always great roads. Great roads. But yet, but yet, with all of that, those things bring anxiety with themselves. My phone drives me crazy. It drives me absolutely crazy. And I know it does my mother-in-law. Because uh, she has a hard time at her age swiping the phone to answer it. Uh, it, brings anxiety, it brings anxiety on us. These things, even though they're there to, to make us where we shouldn't be anxious, they layer us with anxiety. He says, stop stressing. Well, how am I going to do that? The answer, Him. The answer is, He says, cast all your cares on Him, for He cares for you. Peter says that He cast His cares on God, but Jesus tells us that same thing. What does Jesus tell us in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28? Come to me, all you who, who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. In Joshua chapter 1 and verse 19, the Bible says, Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. The Lord your God is with you whenever, wherever you go. From the Old Testament to the New Testament, we need to understand that anxiety is going to do nothing but give the devil a foothold. When we're weak in anxiety, that's when he's going to attack. Turn those anxious, mo anxious moments over to God. His battle plan will work, not ours. And then he says in, uh, in verse 8, he says, and this is the one that we that I, am, I fall down sometimes in. He says, get serious. How does he put it? In, in, verse, in verse 8, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Be sober. I think some versions uh, say, be sober-minded. sober, sober minded. Folks, I think that takes into, into the understanding that I really have to, if I'm going to be sober about the situation, I really need to understand who the devil is. I need to understand his ways. In a battle plan that we had when I was in the military, you, did never, you never went to war without knowing exactly, or the battle without knowing exactly what the enemy had. 
or as close to it as you could. Because if you didn't, you were going to get surprised by something that would defeat you. We need to examine who the devil is. The Bible tells us over and over who he is and what he wants from us. That is for us to follow him and not God. So we better look at this seriously. I know that a lot of y'all didn't raise your hand. Didn't even. I hope it in your mind yet when I asked the question, do you think we're at war with the devil? Because I promise you that we are. He is everywhere. And he uses every device known to him of how to turn us from him or from God to him. And if we don't look at it and pay attention to it, I can't watch television and enjoy it anymore. Because all it does is show me over and over and over again how much the devil is at work. In commercials, in television shows, in movies. It's, it's, it's everywhere. And for the world, most of us just turn our head to it. That's just the way things are. Folks, that is not the way things are. That's not the way things have to be. We need to be sober. We need to be serious about it. And understand, understand that He is who He is and what He is trying to do to us. Because if I don't believe it, I won't build a defense for it. I won't try to put a plan into action. I'll just let things come as they come. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 13 tells us, But gird up your loins of your mind, be sober, and rest your hope fully upon the grace which is, <clears throat> which is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Titus chapter 2 and verse 2, Old men are to be sober-minded, dignified, self-controlled, sound in faith, in love and steadfastness. Titus chapter 2 and verse 2. This is how we get serious about the devil. Learn who he is and figure out a way or ways to make myself stronger. And I don't think we could find it any better than be sober-minded, be diligent, be self-controlled, sound in faith, in love and steadfastness. We need to get serious about our battle and our life fighting the devil. And in that same verse, in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8, after he says, be sober, he says, be diligent. I remember a long time ago when um, Mike Tyson was at his prime when he was a fighter. And if any of y'all remember old Mike Tyson, uh, usually about 20 seconds into the battle of the first round, it was over. But yet my brother, my youngest brother, I think it was my youngest brother, it may have been, it may have been my second brother, but I think it was my youngest brother, told me, he said, I would get in the ring with Mike Tyson for $5, for $5 million. He can just knock me out. And I told him, I said, yes, but guess what? How are you going to spend that money when you're laid up in a nursing home? Because you have no chance. I mean, any of us would be foolish to think that we can come up against a, a prize fighter, a champion prize fighter, without being trained. We couldn't. We would fail. What do if, what if fighters do? Well, everything I see, they run, they work out, they jump rope, and they fight. <laughs> so what are they doing to make themselves champions? They're preparing themselves. They're training themselves to get themselves ready. What does that say about us? If we're going to be vigilant, we better start training. We better start working. Well, how do we train ourselves as Christians? Here's the first way. Get into His Word more. And I don't mean just come to class on Sunday morning, come to class on Wednesday night. I need to be studying this always, every day of my life. 
and figuring out what God wants me to do to protect myself against this enemy that we have, we refer to as the devil. But I would also encourage you to think that if we're going to get busy, that should also include fellowship with the saints. Fellowship with our brothers and sisters in Christ, because we can get strength and encouragement and help from them. And then I think we need to have a strong, strong prayer life. Praying that God would give us understanding of our adversary. That He would give us understanding of His ways. And that He would give us protection from our enemy. And give us protection from the world. He can do that if we would just do that. Lean on Him and He. Now Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove, listen to this, what is good and acceptable and perfect, the perfect will of God. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9. Let us not grow weary while we are doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not lose heart. Every day we need to be vigilant. Every day we need to be busy with God's ways to help us to overcome our adversary. And then in that battle plan, he says in verse 9, he says, stand firm. Look at what he says. He says, resist him. Verse 9, resist him steadfast in the face, knowing that the same suffering, sufferings are experienced by your brothers, your brotherhood, in the world. Resist him. I, one of my favorite parts of Scripture, especially in the New Testament, is when, when Jesus is given the Sermon on the Mount. And he says in the Sermon on the Mount, sometimes we as Christians build our foundation On the sand. And I guess the question is, why are we surprised when all that we have worked for in our Christian life is now laying at our feet because the devil has just overtaken me? When I build the foundation on something that is not going to support me. That's what, that's what he means by being firm. If I don't start with a solid foundation, then everything after that is going to cause me problems. So if you built your house on a sandy soil, I would tell you to tear it down or at least rebuild and move next door on something that's not sandy. Something's on a firm foundation. Resist him. Resist him. In 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 13. Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, and be strong. One of my favorite verses, when things come my way I don't want. Watch, stand fast, be firm in the faith, be brave, be strong. Hebrew, the Hebrew writer in Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 6, But Christ, as a son, over his own house... Listen to this, whose house we are if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm to the end. Folks, our house is Christ's house. We're in Him. We need to be firm to the end. That's every day. Let's don't take the summers off. Let's don't take a Christmas holiday. Let's don't take the weekend. Monday, Sunday, first day of the week, Sunday through Saturday, let's make our life firm to the end. That's what the good battle plan that Peter lays out for us. And then I want you to also notice in that verse, something that I think, and I've said it a couple times this morning, but it's very, very important to me. And that is in, in the end of verse 5, he says knowing that the same suffering are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. We are in this fight together. 
My wife helps me every day with my faith. My children helps me every day in my faith. But you help me every day in my faith. Because I know that whatever I'm going through, you have already been through. And I know that I could ask anybody in this audience for help and they would help me. And I promise you, anybody else in this audience would help you too. Because we all are trying to stand firm. I pray that we are trying to stand firm in our faith. Uh, look, at, look at how Peter ends this battle plan in verse 10 and verse 11. He says, But may the God of all grace, who calls us to His holy, excuse me, to His eternal glory, but <clears throat> by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a little while, we all are going to suffer some. Listen to what he says. He will, I'm adding that word, he will, those words. Suffer a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. My friends, God's plan, battle plan, is clearly laid out for us in this beautiful passage of Scripture. He is just telling us as Christians, be prepared. You don't have to guess how to be prepared. I'm lay, through Peter, I'm laying it out for you. He says, get up every morning and humble yourself. Get yourself out of the way. Strive to get yourself out of the way. Stop stressing, casting your cares upon Him. Get serious with our faith. Get serious with our understanding about who the devil truly is and how he is coming after me and you. And then he says, get busy about God's business. And then stand firm to the end. What does your battle plan look like this morning? Are you dependent on self to try to protect yourself? Folks, if you, if you are, you're going to be struggling. We will always struggle against the devil if we're not prepared. God has tried to lay out for us an easy way for us to prepare ourselves for that great battle. And my friends, if you're, if you're not in Christ, if you do not believe, that, if you believe that He's the Son of God, and you believe that He died upon that cross and was raised on that third day, if you believe that, Peter tells us in uh, Acts chapter 2 and verse 38 that we need to do something about that. He says that we need to repent and be baptized for the remission of sins in Christ Jesus. Folks, if, if, if we want to get on the battlefield... We've got to be in the battle. You can't be in the battle outside of God, outside of Christ. You can only be in the battle if you're on His side. That's the first thing we have to do. And then for the majority of us in this audience, it now becomes, what am I doing every day? Am I using God's battle plan to my advantage? Or am I still dependent on myself? If you're dependent on yourself, I'd ask you to change. Do that today, in, in your own mind, in your own heart. Let's know who the devil is and what he's trying to do to us. And let's strengthen ourselves through God, through His Son, and through His family. This morning, if we can help you in any way, please come while together we stand and we sing. Sweet Lord, have
this morning as we prepare to take up the Lord's Supper, we will be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning in verse 23. For I have received of the Lord what I also deliver to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray for the bread. Father God, we are so thankful, Father, for the blessings you continue to bestow upon us, Father. Father, no greater blessing than your Son, Father, that you sent on this, this earth, Father, that he left you, his home and glory, Father, to sacrifice himself upon Calvary's cross, Father. Father, as we take of this loaf that represents that body that he gave so freely, Father, we pray that we take it in a manner that's well pleasing to you, Father. In your name we do humbly pray. Amen. Let us continue. In the, same, in the same way also, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he come. Let us pray. Father God, once again, Father, we come to you, Father. So thankful, Father, for your love, Father, that as you hung upon Cabbage Call, Father, you gave your blood so freely for all mankind, Father. Father, we pray that way as we take up this cup, Father, we take it in a way that we're pleasing and accepting your holy and divine sight. In your name we do humbly pray. Amen. We're glad to see each one of you here this morning. We appreciate you coming out and being with us. It was a good day to worship. Our crowd is a little slim this morning due to the weather. We realize that. We are truly grateful to have men in this congregation that can step up when it's needed, and we're thankful for Richard and the lesson he brought this morning. We all realize that the devil is looking at each one of us differently, and, and we are in a battle every day of our lives to live like Christ would want us to live and we have to realize that the devil wants you know us worse than those in the world because he's got them he wants us because we're here we're here together as a church and we're here together to live like Christ and he's after each one of us so we appreciate that lesson Richard and, and I hope that everyone had the opportunity to listen and put it in our hearts as we go into this week don't forget uh, the sweetheart bank it was canceled it's going to be in two weeks you still have an opportunity to call the office or you know get on uh, line and register or get with uh, Derek and get your name on that list the boards and the lobbies don't forget those the deacons have their areas of worship laid out and uh, get signed up for that um, those that lost loved ones don't forget uh, the glass family to remember them in your prayers and uh, Carolyn Porter as well also, don't forget Chandra's friend, Beverly Patrick, uh, needs prayers because she had lost her daughter, 33 years old, who was in the military. And if you get a chance to, I think we have that information maybe on RAM or either Chandra would have it to be able to send her a card if you're able. So I believe I said for the announcements, don't forget, you know, remember Gary and Derek all are homesick. So let's, there's several people that are sick. We have that sent out on RAM on. Also in the uh, 
bulletin or on our handouts this morning. Let's continue to keep all those in our prayers. Let's stand as we have our closing song and our closing prayer. Oh, one announcement. I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. One more thing. We've decided, I've talked with other elders, and due to the declining weather, uh, we noticed there was ice in the parking lot. You know, when I came in, we've been talking all morning, and we've, you know, been trying to watch the weather, and uh, with the EOC and, and looking at different situations, we've decided to postpone this evening's service. We want everybody to stay home, make sure you're safe. Uh, Joey's sending out something on RAM, you know, for the storm that's coming in for the next few days for some things that would be good for you to, to do to prepare for that. But due to the declining weather, we've decided as an eldership to postpone this evening's service. So everybody be, when you get out of here this morning, make sure you get home, get inside, and let everybody be safe. So. If you would please stand for our closing song, it'll be 350. <clears throat> 350. We'll sing the first verse. <laughs> I'm satisfied with God, we are so thankful, Father, for this day and the blessings that you continue to bestow upon us, Father. Father, we thank you so much for Jesus, his love, Father, that he would submit himself to this life, Father. The great example that he left, Father, lived this earth as a man, Father, yet without sin, Father, and we thank you so much for his love. Father God, we thank you for this day that we were able to come out here to worship you, Father, in spirit and truth, Father. We hope, trust, and pray, Father, that our things that we have done here today has been acceptable, pleasing in, in your holy sight, Father. Father, as we give back now the things that you have blessed us with, Father, we pray that we will have purpose in our heart that the things that we have given back today, Father. As we give, Father, we give, Father, for the benefit of your church, that we the works that goes on here, Father, this congregation, not only this congregation, Father, throughout the state, throughout this country, throughout the world, Father, through our mission people, Father. Father, we continue to pray for the ones that are suffering through sickness, Father, we pray that you will touch each and every one of them, Father, the things that they stand in need of, Father. Bless each and one of them, Father. Give them their most wanted and help them stream back to them, Father, if it's your ever loving will, Father. Father, once again, we pray for the ones who are about to leave this place, Father, as well, Father. We pray for the travel and grace, Father. Father, we know there's increment weather out there now. We pray that everyone will be safe as they travel to their destinations, Father. Forgive us, Father, when we fall short of your will as we return and repent of those things, Father. And it's your name. We do humbly pray.